All right, so uh, first off, thanks for coming, man. Um, we haven't seen you in a while since when was that? Two years ago? Yeah, when y'all not this past game at Tech. It may have been two, two, two uh, yeah, maybe two Georgia three. Techs ago. Yep. Yeah, because y'all what? All, y'all alternate almost. Who goes to who? Yeah, and some year, you know, and the way the schedule works out, it could be we could play them twice in a year. You know, just it they rotate it now because of the odd number. Well, we appreciate you coming on. Uh, like Dan just said, you know, we've been really, really excited to get you on. Um, we had a good guest last week and just trying to reach out to different people that we know that could kind of speak on um, not only kind of what's going on, but your story to kind of where you are right now and how you've gotten there. Um, a lot of people who are listening to this may not know you and they may not understand the dynasty that <laughs> you have built for uh, Duke Media. So, for us, I guess to start off, could you kind of speak on, you know, where you came from? A lot of people may not know you're a graduate of Penn State and your kind of journey to where you are now. Yeah, I, I it's been a it, – actually, mine has been pretty uh, pretty straightforward. I, I did my undergrad at Penn State and uh, fell into, by accident, like so many things that happened to all of us, by accident uh, fell into sports information uh, as a student. I was taking an independent studies and – um, somebody said, Hey, I got you a job and it happened to be in sports info. And, and I had, I didn't even know that that field existed. And, uh, I'm not as, uh, good of an athlete as the, as the folks I'm talking to right now. So that was a way I could be around sports without having to, you know, be good enough to compete in them. And, um, so I fell into it, did a, did a year internship at the university of Florida uh, which has one of the better programs for what I was doing in the country. And uh, from there, went to, went to SMU in Dallas as, a, as an assistant sports info person. And through attrition and various things, uh, ended up being an, ass, an assistant athletic director there. And it, it set me up at 31 years old. This, this, uh, this school named Duke had, a, had an opening and, um, you know, I've been there 20 years, so it's yeah, so. It what year did you? What, roles, you know. So yeah. What year did you get there at Duke? I got I got to Duke in January of 2000. So you were in in the heart of it with uh, the the basketball teams, especially when not that not that they were on the map before that, but yeah. at least for our age and generation, um, you know, with the Carlos Boozers and Shane Battiers, and Jay Williams, and yeah. you know those original Dunleavies of the world, those guys. That was like where I was realizing that it was such a like a juggernaut of a of a program. That was my first team. Was that group as freshmen? Dunleavy, Boozer, Williams as freshmen. Battier was a junior, and Chris Carrawell was our senior. And uh, we ended up uh, Sweet Sixteen, lost to Florida in uh, Syracuse in the Dome. Uh, my first year and and you know of course I'm from SMU I'm thinking this is great man we're going to the sweet 16 right, went to, right. and of course I learned real quick that that's that's not the goal. that's not the goal where I'm working now you know mm -hmm. yeah no I, it, it is amazing when you're around programs where getting there is awesome and getting there is also the expectation and yeah, it's not getting to the tournament. It's about winning in the tournament, you know, and that's, they're two completely different things. Yep. No, we, we, we feel that. Um, I think the one, you know, one of the things and one of the many things that uh, coach does great is, is he, he doesn't allow our team to feel the pressure of the past. Um, it's, he, he is very clear with them about this is, this is our journey, our team's journey together. This isn't about the journeys I've had before. This is about this team and, and living its life. And, um, and so he does a great job where I really, for the most part, I don't think that we go into that NCAA tournament every year with the pressure of the past on us. I, to say there's no pressure, that's, that's different. You know, there's, right, right. Pressure, there's, there's season pressure, there's living up to a one seed or whatever you might be pressure but I don't think they're worried you know about Christian Leitner and Grant Hill and JJ Reddick and all that I think they're I think we've done a really good job with that and just those guys are just proud to be part of that fraternity right and I, I think that's a great point too of 
just, you know, we talk about being able to live in the moment and everything that comes with that. And I think the larger scale stage that you're on um, athletically, you have to be able to do that more. What is some of the things that you all try to do at Duke to not only, because I think it's hard having an 18 year old kid, you know, yeah, you may have been the best athlete in your program, respectively at your high school, but when you come into Duke and you're playing in front of, you know, national televised events and huge crowds, big arenas, how do you get these 18 year old kids or even, you know, 20 or whatever to learn how to live in the moment? Well, again, I, I think so much of that comes from uh, uh, culture. And uh, actually, I was watching the, you know, uh, Dansby will appreciate this. I was watching the draft last night and his former coach was on there quite a bit. And, and it became, it, it became real clear, like culture is a big thing with him. You could, you could hear it. And, and I think within our program, um, you know, you, the, the people that they're around every day, we all, we all own Duke basketball. Like co coach has a thing about you know, you don't represent Duke basketball, you are Duke basketball. Mm -hmm. And there's, again, that's different, you know, and in a lot of places, a lot of places are just, you know, guys are part of that team and they don't, you know, they don't feel that. And I think in our, at our place, you know, one of the great things coach has done is we all feel that we're part of something way bigger than us. And, and, um, you know, we're willing to do what it takes, uh, whatever the job may be. Um, you know, I have a role in it. Uh, the, the person who cleans our locker rooms has a role in it. The person who changes the light bulbs has a role in it. The person who cleans the floors at camera, you know, it's all of us are, are important in our own ways. And, um, and I think those kids, they get around that and they see, they, they start understanding like, you know, Hey, maybe I'm not going to play 30 minutes, but, but the, as a freshman, maybe the six I play, are really really important minutes and mm -hmm. and he does a really great job of kind of conveying that to them and and for the most part over the years they've bought into that they really right. have right and i think it's important that what you noted as far as everybody has a role we're not talking about just the players we're talking about the managers um i think that's something that i've grown in my appreciation for over time is is that it's a it's a whole family you know it's not just the players it's not just the staff um you know, it's people like yourself, the other uh, people in the media department. Uh, it takes each and everybody's best effort every day, especially at a program like that, to where you do create that culture and you're creating something that you said that's bigger in yourself, which is why when you look at, you know, the Duke bench, all the assistant coaches played for K. You know, I, I think that, mm -hmm. that that speaks volumes for uh, what that program stands for and why it has been so successful and when, uh, when a year isn't, as successful as what a Duke standard would be, it's still a very good year, you know? So it's, um, it's always been, obviously I'm a big fan, but it's, it's when you start diving into it past the, the fandom aspect of it, it's, there's a reason it is the way it is. Yeah. No, he, you know, and again, he's, it's also, it's easier for guys to listen to someone like that. They know he, they know what he's been through. They know who he's coached. They know that uh, he's not only done that at Duke, but he did a, he did it with USA basketball for 11 years. So, um, you know, it's a pretty powerful thing to say to a kid, you know what? Um, I remember when I dealt with this with LeBron or Kobe or, you know, someone that they clearly recognize and, and understand, um, you know, the stature that that player may, you know, may have been uh, great, great story. Uh, quick, real quick. We were up in Brooklyn uh, last year for a game, uh, and Durant was, he's rehabbing, you know, and, uh, and he comes at the end of practice. He knows Nolan Smith really well. And, and he, all those DMB guys, they, they stick together. Uh, but they, he came at the end of practice and it was so funny, like coach entered, you know, to the team. He's like, he said, Hey, this is Kevin. Like, and he's like, coach, yeah. they, I think they know, you know, we were all <laughs> laughing, right? Coach, they, yeah, they know, you know, but it, it was it was pretty funny and and just again listening to Durant, um, you know, talk about his experience with with uh, with culture was cool and um, you know it, it's it's the it's the thing that I think coach is the best at is creating creating the the ultimate environment in which to win. I mm -hmm. think that's what he does better than anything else, and he does a lot of things really well. But I think that's that's the number one thing, which might be the 
I guess the most impressive thing. I th- every time you know, I look at like a major college program, whether it's Vandy for baseball or especially Duke for basketball or the uh, Georgia's, Alabama's, Ohio State's of the world, is you get all these big name players and they all buy in. And as you know, you see shirts with all in or B1 or one team or whatever it is, but it's it's a whole different thing when you're preaching that and everyone's like, oh yeah, but it's a different caliber when you get these five-star guys or whoever and they come in and they really do buy all in. And I think that when you see these championship runs or these deep runs, that's where it comes from is you have to be able to trust, you know, that guy that's coming off the bench for three minutes or whatever, whether or not he's getting a role of, I need you to push the ball these three minutes or I need, Hey, I need you to lock this guy for three minutes or whatever. Maybe his role is just important as the guy that we need to score 15, 20, whatever it may be. Yeah, I, th- I think in a word, it's called trust, right? Right. I mean, I, I'm sure as players and as athletes, I mean, they're, you know, you if you're a double play combination, if you trust that guy to your left, you're probably willing to, to throw yourself out there a little bit more knowing he's got your back or he's going he's gonna to save you if something bad does happen. Mm-hmm. And, right. uh, and I, so I think in a word, you know, that as I'm listening to you, I would think trust comes to mind. And any of us that have been teammates – whether it's in business, whether it's on a sports team, whether it's in a family, like that, that's probably the single biggest thing we could all have for each other and with each other is trust. Oh yeah. I I was just about to say that. I mean, you and your team and and the people that you deal with, because there's a lot more people than just yourself. You know, you may be the right hand guy and and then the point guy that everything's going through, but you're not doing it on your own. You know, there's however many other people in that department, um, especially we were talking about before the show started, just the juggernaut of the social media world that y'all have. Um, I, I thoroughly enjoy seeing all the different statistics that y'all put up about most televised games, most watched, uh, biggest following, mm-hmm. uh, and just how much it's grown, you know, from what would be considered old school media to what it is now and, and seeing how the following is is through the roof and the content is uh, very well done. Uh, you know, the everything that y'all do, whether it's on the court, behind the scenes, it's done at a higher standard and level than the majority of other, you know, programs, businesses, or, you know, across the globe. Yeah, I think we're on the social media specifically. I mean, we're, we're so fortunate to have, we feel we have the best social media team in sports. Yeah. Um, we've got, we've got a creative lead named Dave Bradley, who's incredible. Uh, super smart, just has a great feel for it, when to push, when to pull back, when to engage, when to not, you know, he's, he's got a great feel for it. He's got a great feel for kids um, and, and what's cool, you know, and what, that's what, the biggest you know, deal. Yeah. yeah. What's going to resonate with an 18 year old, as you were saying, a five-star elite player, you know, you've got to think about those things. And, uh, but we've got, we're so fortunate. We got, you know, essentially a photographer that's with us at all times. We've got two full-time video people who are with us at all times. So we, we have resource. But there. Th- yeah. The, those guys have done a great job utilizing the resource, which is, which is more than, than a lot of places. Uh, you know, we, we dove into this pretty, pretty hard. Um, probably, I don't know, probably five to six years ago, really hard. Um, yeah and uh, almost doubled down on everything and it, and it's paid off. Um, you know, we're, you, you walk that line between, you don't want to be like, you know, two in people's face, but it's also a point of pride to know that we have the biggest college athletics following in the country, any yeah. sport, any team, like that's, there, there's a point of pride there, you know, but we, we try to, we try to do things. And I think, I think we're very on brand. I think that, you know, we have done a really good job, you know, our partnership with Nike has helped us with this, but I, I believe that we've stayed current in an environment where it could be easy to fall into more of a traditional thought, you know, and we've, we've kind of stayed current with kids. We've stayed current with brand. And, uh, and I do, f- I feel like we're still, we still have that cool factor a little bit that, um, you know, it, w- it would be easy to not have that in our situation because of the success and the tradition and the uniform, you know, like it, it could, it could be real easy to fall out of that. And I oh, feel, yeah. like I mean, look at the school behind you. <laughs> yeah. I mean, right? the, the architecture, you know, it's like, 
it's yeah. old school. How much yeah. has what you do changed from the time you got to Duke to right now? Obviously, as uh, we were kind of talking about this today, we're just you coming on of, you know, social media changes so fast. And if you really look at, I would say, what, 2012, probably when we got out of high school, how quickly, yeah. I guess, when Instagram, like Instagram started, started yeah. Snapchat. Uh, yeah. I was like, Twitter, what is this? Huh? Yeah. Like, so, you know, the social media environment of, and like now with the new age of TikTok or whatever, sweeping these young kids, um, what, obviously that's a huge difference from when you started, but what has kind of been your strategy if you're able to get, you know, like you said, you have to kind of flirt with that line, but how have you changed and adapted what you and your staff do over the years? Well, I, I think, I mean, I think you hit on it. I mean, I think when I first got there, a huge part of what I was thinking about was how to, how to relay info in the most efficient way to, you know, our radio partners, our television partners, our mm -hmm. media, you know, traditional media, print media, which, oh, by the way, back then, it, it was print media. Like there right. were actual papers that everyone read and it's a different, you know, and, and over time, I think we've had to, we've had to evolve it like everyone else and, and understand that, um, you know, things are changing. And, and as much as, as, as traditional as I am, and, and I would, you know, there, I, I miss those days. I miss, I miss talking to editors. I miss, I miss having a converse a, a lunch with my beat writer and, you know, talking through what the next three months could look like for us. I, you know, and I, and, and at first I was probably a little reluctant to, to kind of dealing with some of the changes that, that were clearly in front of our face. I think over time I've had to learn to just be way more open to, you know, what's out there. And, and Oh, by the way, at what's, what is, where are our kids living? Like what world are they living in? The way they communicate is completely different from the way I communicated when I was younger. Right. You know, I mean, we, we had face to face or you got on the telephone and then all of a sudden along the way there are cell phones and then all of a sudden there's texting and then all this, like these guys that a lot of them aren't used to talking. Right. Yeah. Oh yeah. You know, oh, they, yeah. they used to, to they're text. literally yeah. used to putting, you know, to, to texting and, and doing it that way. And so we've had to, you know, I think all of us have been challenged to change. Um, you put, I mean, I think the secret to all of it, you put really great people around you to help you stay current. And, and trust and trust that, right. they, know that, what they're talking yeah, about. that they know what they're talking about. And then you have to be uh, open and curious enough to be willing to change and adapt. And that, that was kind of leading into my next question is how do you get somebody like Coach K on board with that? Because mm. I'm not going to sit here and say he's old school by, na you know, by nature or whatever. But at the same time, he's pretty active with some of y'all social stuff and, and doing things that are fun and witty and clever. Uh, I don't know if it's because he knows that kids are going to resonate more with that or, um, you know, if he's had that, that kind of trouble changing with that as well. But I think he does a phenomenal job of understanding how to push um, in that regard, but also how to, you know, kind of like stay true to the Duke value system, as you yep. call it. I I think that's what I think you, you hit it. I mean, I think I don't want to speak for him, but I'll, I'll speak observationally. Um, I think he understands that he's got to constantly change as a leader and he's got to, he's got to understand, you know, like I said, that the way these guys communicate now, um, big thing in sports, like, you know, in the old days, they might have three hour film sessions and just grind on certain things that now he's got to give them a smaller menu of things to think about going into a game because they have all this other stimuli going on, you know, like it's, it's different. So you got to, the kid, they're more visual now. So you, you put words up on a, on a screen or something, or you text them more and you just think about this thing. I want you focused on this thing going into this game. And, um, and, you know, so he's done a great job with that. What he wears you know, you, kids like, hey, coach, those are great. Sh those are cool sh shoes you have today. Like he's he's thinks about like what kind of music he's listening to. What kind he needs to know like, hey, that's I can identify who that artist is when I'm in the locker room. You know, or I like that, or I don't like that. You know, whatever. Um, just he he's adapted probably better than any of us. Um, 
quite frankly. And we, 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 we've all kind of understood if we follow his lead, usually very, very good things happen for all of us. Um, you know, not that, not to say any of us has all the answers for everything, but that's, that's a person I think we all believe, you know, again, trust. And we, we all believe that if we get on his bus, it's going to go in a, in a place we all want to go. Um, you got, yeah, I, okay. I mean, I, I kind of want to shift away from that aspect and I kind of want to go, um, just talk about the actual basketball itself. Um, I get my first big question would be, I want to talk about the changes from building the, you know, team that's got juniors and seniors and now the one and done, you know, the one and done era. Um, because I mean, it, it's been pretty seamless for Duke, but it would happen very quickly. Uh, I feel like when Jabari Parker came, um, because I mean, the, the original that probably no one would think about would be somebody like Lou all dang. Right. Yeah. Um, but that was, that was before one and done was a thing because you could still go out of high school then if I'm, if I'm not mistaken. Yep. Um, but then you, and then you see, all right, you got Jabari Parker and then it just kind of, you know, snowballed from there and you started seeing, okay, they're getting one guy a year and they're surrounding him with some other people, you know, and then you had the Brandon Ingrams, um, and then you had the the championship team in 15 with Jaleel and, and Justice and Tyus and Grayson. And then it just, it really exploded from there. And I don't know how or why, but I think that a lot of it too, is you start to see the Kentuckys of the world and, and, and certain schools getting these players. And it's like, well, in order to compete at that high level, the, the talent level coming in from high school to college isn't as big of a jump anymore. I don't feel like because of the youth sports and the training and, and kids are more elite. And if you would have said, you know, 10 years ago that you'd have two, six, seven guys in Zion and RJ, that are left-handed that come in or are that skilled. I would tell you you're crazy, right. you know, and that they'd be that polished, but that happens. Well, you're seeing them. Fifth and sixth graders dump now. I know. Oh, it's crazy. So, I mean, it's like, what has been the biggest change, in your opinion, when it comes to that? Because it's it's completely changed the landscape of basketball. And then we can go on further about the G League stuff now mm -hmm. with um, competing almost for kids in the contracts and, uh, you know, the Jalen Greens of the world and some of those guys that are going to take the money, which we deal with in baseball some, but I feel like it's a different beast when it comes to basketball. Yeah, I, I think uh, – I think – Definitely kids are, they're more, they're more um, ready for today's game. I, I want to use that caveat because I, I'll tell you, like I watched the 2010 championship game during, since we've been home, it was on CBS or okay. something. Yeah. So I was amazed at the ball movement, movement without the ball, help side defense. It, it was a little bit of a different game, quite frankly, than what we mm -hmm. watched today. Mm -hmm. You know, so I think, I do think that, uh, I do think that, you know, kids, the, some of the kids coming in maybe don't have as great a feel for that because a lot of work is being done individually, you know, where, hey, I'm going to work on this, uh, my dribbling today, you know, I'm going to work on this skill and, it, and it's all done without teammates and it's all, a lot of it's done without a ball, quite frankly, you know, some of the stuff they're doing is, is, uh, you know, just straight up footwork and things like that. Um, so yeah, I think for today's game, they're coming in and a little more ready for that. Uh, but at the highest, highest level, I mean, you know, look, look what Virginia did, you know, they, they won a championship kind of playing old school basketball, yeah, right. and cutting and, point games. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and stuff like that. So I think, I think there's still room for all that. Um, I do think that, uh, you're right that it has changed it has changed who we get in terms of age and then how long you know we we don't have a kid for four years we have a kid for sometimes nine to eleven months right that's so what we're doing is cramming in that culture piece in a quarter of the time that we would have with the you know with the kind of a kid that had a normal progression a four year progression right so that's that's hard to kind of do the culture piece and the teamwork thing right away. You got to figure out better. You know, you got to you got to be more efficient doing that with those with those guys that you know are probably going to go pro. 
Um, and, but I will say this, I can tell for the 20 years I've been there, the type of kid we get, whether he's here for a year, two, three, or four is very similar, very similar. So yeah, we've had a lot of guys that have played a year at our place and then, and gone pro. Um, I, they're, they're all Duke guys though. You know, like the type of kid we get is a, is, is a pretty consistent type of kid. And, um, and we're really, really fortunate because they're, we got good guys. I mean, it's, it's that simple. We got, we got, we got really good guys and, and um, you know, wish you wish you had them longer cause you wish you got to know them better. You know, you'd love to, you'd love to develop. I'd love to have the relationship with, with maybe a Zion, RJ, Cam, um, you know, some of those guys, uh, Cassius this year was a great kid, great kid. You know, I'd love to have the same relationship with Cassius that I had with JJ Reddick, or I had with Shane Batty, or I had with Jay Williams, you know, but it, it, it's a different time, you know, it's a, and frankly, if those guys were playing in today's environment, they'd probably be one and done's too. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah that's that's the reality of it. It hasn't changed the type. It's changed how long you got them. If yeah. that makes and sense. it just goes back to sh- like what Danzy said earlier is like all these players, regardless of how long they're there, is that they're bought in because they want to come back and you see them on social media, very active tweeting y'all and, you know, just really still bought into the system way after they've already left. The, the brotherhood concept that yeah. we, we kind of, you know, we, we felt a few years ago, we needed a name for it. And so that's where we landed. And, it, and those guys, they've really bought in. I mean, they, they love it. It's they not something it. you can really fake. You no. know, it's very authentic when you see it from an outside perspective. It, sure. it, it is. It's, it's cool. It's a, it's a neat thing to, to see. And, um, you know, they, you know, we don't, we don't sell brotherhood stuff. Like it's, that's, that's theirs. It's, it's you're their, right. Yeah. So it's a, it, you know, that, that is a very real thing. And, and actually with, some of the things that have been going on, um, you know, just socially in our country the last, you know, I mean, they've been gone on a long time, but right. they've gotten more attention over the last few weeks. I think, um, you know, we've had uh, two kind of all brotherhood meetings to talk about those things. And those guys, I mean, we, the first call they had over a hundred players on, we had guys wow, in their fifties, yeah, fifties, forties, thirties, twenties, and teens on that call. And I think that's kind of, you know, Obviously, that's a huge part there, but I think that is what makes these big programs such as Duke so great is that you come in knowing you have the support of other Duke athletes that have been through that program. And that kind of speaks on the brotherhood thing, too. You know, not that there's a pressure, but when you come to Duke, you understand that you are coming to Duke University. You understand what that name holds and the value and the weight that the name holds. So when you do come in, you know, it's almost kind of as a you want to fit there's no option you must kind of accept the culture and if you're not and to be honest if you're probably not a guy that would accept the culture if you're not coming to duke i would assume or, well, or you're not getting recruited or you're not, yeah, as i'm saying I mean, you're not getting recruited to go to john duke. john shire and nate james obviously do a terrific job of that because yeah. they not only get the top talent but they get the top kid. between the ears yeah. Yeah. yeah they get the top kid yeah no we bet we're i can't even tell you how lucky we are and again from a from a support staff standpoint, um, you know, in order for us to, to, to not stress about what our kids are going to say or what they're going to do. Um, and again, like we're not perfect. Like that's the other thing, you know, we, we, we've never claimed to be perfect or have some higher ground than another program. It works for us. And the type of kid we get, we wouldn't trade because they're, they're just good guys. And it, it, you're starting from such a good, pure place that you, you just don't deal with some of the things maybe that you see other, other places around the country. And it does not mean we're, but I don't want it to sound wrong. It but does you just not, take, you just take pride in being there. Yes. Do you yes. guys we're do, lucky. Right. Yeah, we're lucky. what yeah. do you guys do as far as like character development or even, you know, we, I wanted to kind of get in this earlier. That's when I looked at you for your question, but with being at Duke, you're going to have a camera in your face. You're going to, especially if you're a top tier guy, you're going to have a camera in your face. You're going to have, like you said, your social media team is packed. You have people watching you, recording you at all times. What do you guys do not only as far as character development, but 
um, you know, just from the interview aspect, learning how to speak, learning how to speak in public, learning how to be, you know, handle an interview right after, because we know, of course, they don't ask athletes interviews a day later. They ask you, oh, you just missed a game winning shot. How'd it feel? You know, yeah. how do you guys handle that? And I'm sure that's part of your program and your platform and development, but. Um, John, real quick before you answer that too, I, I want to, uh, I remember something that you had said to me uh, that I felt like was a pretty big culture shift for y'all as well. Uh, that, that I've always remembered was we're teaching these kids how to have a career in the NBA, not to have a cup of coffee. And that's how the programs run. And I feel like that that's kind huge. of builds off of, you know, what he was just asking is like the development in every realm, how to take care of your body, how to play the game, how to develop yourself and then, mentally, physically, you know, the whole thing. The yeah. Yeah. Well, that's got to be a huge recruiting point for Duke too, is, you know, just like any other major program, I guess for just because I'm, I'm a high school football coach. So when we have somebody come recruit a high caliber kid, if they want that kid to come, it's, you know, we're not just developing you to be a great college football player. It's these are the things we're going to do for you that we've, and here's a list of names of people we have done. You can reach out to that's going to be great for the next level. And that's going to be great to, you know, maybe life after football or after basketball. These are like life skills that you get to get when you go to this university as well. Yep. I, I think there's, yeah, there's a lot, there's a lot there to unpack. I think that the, a big thing is you're making a, you're really making a lifetime choice. I mean, you, you know, um, and so to, and oh, by the way, to come to a school where the person sitting next to you in class may have done a, may be the president of a startup or maybe a world renowned musician, or maybe like, there's some high end people at like you kind of have to up your game because you're around excellence at every turn at our place. Yeah. And uh, so that's going to naturally, you're going to by osmosis a little bit, you're going to get yeah. some of that. Um, and then, you know, yeah, we have, we have, you know, development plans with, with these guys. And sometimes it's um, sometimes it's real specific to a team, you know, we like, Hey, this is an issue we we're running into. And, you know, so, um, and so much of that's done with our staff and, you know, the, if they need to pull kids aside or whatever, I mean, that, you're a coach, you under, you know, you know how yeah, that is. Absolutely. Um, but, uh, but, uh, but there, yeah, we have, we have programming. We make sure that they, you know, that they understand finances, that they understand, um, you know, when they're, we have resources for them. If they are a one and done, for instance, or, or you know, it doesn't matter. You know, wherever they decide to go pro, you know, there's a process in place to help them with agents, you know, um, you know, we're, one of the things we're unpacking right now is the NIL and what all that means. And, you know, how can we help them, you know, within the, within the rules, how can we help them, you know, maximize their brand? Um, you know, we talk a lot to them about personal brand and, and by the way, how important is social media in that and, mm -hmm. and what you're putting out there and, and our social media team works with them as far as the interview stuff. I got to be, I mean, it, we get a lot of credit for things, quite frankly, we don't really do. <laughs> I mean, it's like so much of that is, is taken care of in the recruiting process and, right, and right. The families, these guys are from, they've done the work. Like it's not, we, we didn't sit down with Zion and, and kind of tell Zion like, Hey, here's what to say. Zion right. knew what to say and he's an unselfish guy. So it was always about his teammates. And I think that's one of the cool things that that year for us was watching the amount of attention that guy got and the amount of attention he didn't want. It was mm -hmm. really kind of cool to see, you know? And um, so I'd love to take, I'd look, I'd love to take credit for, hey, we have this big master <laughs> plan and it, so much of it is done in the recruiting process. And again, to, back to the type of kid we get and the character that we get and the families they're from. Um, so much of that is done. The hard work's been done by their parents, you know, right. and then we get them and, and then, and again, I've worked with, we've worked with kids. I mean, I, if, if there is a kid who is uncomfortable, we've had, I mean, I've had a couple over the years that like, Hey, work with me. And, um, and, and we, we would go out of our way. I remember, I remember one specific player who was a really good player, really great kids and could not have been more shy. And it, it was, but it, it's like, you're too good to not be in front of the camera. 
right going yeah. to get asked it's only right. going to benefit you too you right. know in your career and, and making more money and and the, the more personable you feel to other yeah. people then not that you have to become a different person but the right. more that you feel comfortable networking and and talking to the media and you know doing those kinds of things then you're only going to help yourself in the long run help you down yeah and and what we actually found was it was cool. We finally found some common ground. I finally got out of him that he collected baseball cards as a kid and that the Oakland A's were his favorite team. And so every time we, I was like, okay, so think about when you were collecting cards as a kid and like how happy you were and like, try to try to elicit that feeling when you're having conversations with the media that like, you know, you're just talking. Right. And, and, uh, and by the way, you control, you control the interview. You don't have to answer what they say. You can dance around any question. You just right. gotta. What do you want to say here? And you know, I, I remember that one very specifically. And and um, and he's a great kid. And 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 um, you know, had a had a really good career. And um, but yeah, we would help him. You know, if anyone ever can. What we want to develop is, uh, we want to develop the relationship to a point where if a kid did feel uncomfortable, they would come talk to us and not feel like right. we're gonna judgmental about it or whatever like hey let's all right let's go let's let's yeah. get so you and that goes back into them buying into the whole culture itself right. we got their backs like that, right. that one that's thing the, we the brotherhood our, we we as a program we as people who support our program we have their back there is nothing i wouldn't do or any of our people wouldn't do for our kids if they if they reached out to us whether they're here or whether they're in the pros or whether they're in business and they say, Hey, I need something. We would, we would all respond to yeah. anyone. Well, I, I want to, I mean, it's, uh, it, it's just pretty uh, indicative of the culture y'all have built. I mean, every time you talk about them, you refer to them as your kids, you know, you're not talking about like our players or our former guys. I mean, they are your family, you know, y'all created the atmosphere where uh, each kid that comes in is your kid and you treat them as such. And yep. that's, you know, that's the standard that is expected to be upheld, um, you know, from the top down. Yeah, I probably, I don't probably, because I'm old, I probably shouldn't say that. I should <laughs> probably say our student athletes are play, you know, our young men. They're young men, is what right. they are. Right. They're young, men and they're, um, and I'll tell you what, there is nothing better, you know, for any of us to watch one of our one of our guys just do something special or or say something publicly. Like, man, that is, you know, that is dead on. Like that. Mm -hmm. is, so cool to see like our guys, you know, put them and have the confidence to do it. And um, it, it's, and we've had so many of them and it's it, it, that, that you're proud of, you know, and it's, uh, I can't imagine being their coach. You know, I just do it. I'm very, I'm on the perimeter. I mean, it's, it's, uh, I can't even imagine what it must feel like for those guys who have coached them. Yeah. I just know a big thing um, for what we do for high school is, you know, the way that, individuals communicate like you said today are very different uh, kids are on their phone constantly it's a constant text message snapchat whatever it may be and then you get this kid who may be super shy but it turns out he's a you know four or five star dn yep. well that's going to bring some attention to you so they may not always be comfortable with speaking and a big part of that is they're not ever really forced to do it so like i know like in my classroom big pushes get up there and talk. Like, I want to hear you talk because no matter what you're doing, you're going to have to talk to somebody. Um, so that's where I was just kind of seeing, you know, when you all got them, if, as the years go by, have you seen a, you know, they may not be as great at public speaking, which they may not, which some people are just naturally not good at public speaking. That's fine. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, but that's kind I, of where I was at. Yeah. I think, I think a big thing right now, and again, I think you guys probably see this uh, as, as we do, um, you know, the, all this instant communication with texting and, and, you know, all the other ways they communicate Snapchat and, and all that, um, it, it depersonalizes things a little bit. Um, I, you know, one of the things that we, we have a, a standard in our program that we look each other in the eye when we talk. And I think for, for a decent amount of the guys who come in, that might be one of the hardest things to right. do because it is hard. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? And, and again, but that's all about developing that trust. It is really hard to kind of 
pull the leg of the person you're talking to if you're looking them straight in the eye. And they can mm-hmm. sense, and usually people can sense it anyway, right? Right. right. And that's part of it. Like tell the truth in the moment. Be 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 have the courage in the moment to say what needs to be said. You might get in the moment, you might get your head bitten off, or the person may disagree with you, but the fact you had the courage to say it, it, it will only build trust down the road that, hey, this guy's willing to say what needs to be said. And um, that's another big, that's another big thing. I think that's what I've seen is guys have a harder time and guys are not great at this anyway. Right. Like, as guys, yeah. we're, yeah. <laughs> you know, I mean, I, I just, yeah, I do. It, it happens, you know, where we just go into our thing and we think about what we got going on and we just aren't, we don't want to deal with the world, you know? And, and I think uh, that's a big part of what, what we try to have them, have them do is, uh, is, is, is have that, have that confidence in yourself to say what needs to be said, look someone in the eye, be firm, be, you know, be demonstrative. Um, and, and I, I think that helps them. I, I mean, I think there's so many life lessons just in that one little thing that, you know, that's, that could carry someone a long way. Well, it's, it's a major life skill you're teaching them. You know, it's different when you walk in a room and you go, Hey, my name is Mason. Or it's different if I walk in a room, look you in the eyes, shake your hand and go, Hey, it's, my name is Mason Howes. I'm here yeah. to do X, Y, and Z. Yep. So, yep. It's a major big part right there. What's the same as like, you know, playing, you want, you need to be present in the game. You know, you're, you're going to look dumb if you're just cherry picking, you know, your backcourt or something. It's the same thing in real life. You just want to, you need to be present in the moment, be aware of your surroundings. And it goes on and off. Yeah. Well, like I said, having courage in that moment with whatever it is, whether it's looking somebody in the eye, saying your truth. Um, you know, step up the foul line, make a big shot, you know, whether it's an at bat, making a business decision. I mean, it's, 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 that's an easy way to break it down. In my opinion is what is the courageous thing to do in this moment, you know, which is more often than not the right thing to do in that same moment. Um, I want to ask a little bit about uh, like more into the basketball side, Duke specific things um, going over, I guess, just some of the teams. Like I, I want to know the best team that never won. 2011 not even close <laughs> which was that's so that's Kyrie's year oh uh, yeah that was well that was after y'all had one and ten yes and then I, you had I, yep Nolan I, and all them back Kyle, uh, Mason Plumley. I am convinced that that team would have run the table had everyone stayed healthy because we were in the early part of that season we're absolutely destroying people good teams we had a really good early season schedule we went um we right, played kansas state and all that yeah kansas state remember jacob poland great really tough tough point guard it, from k-state we played them in kansas city in a tournament in the final so you know you can imagine what the building was like right and i i mean Kyrie absolutely torched him. And I felt like, I mean, in Poland is a big time player. Like he was a big time, tough college basketball player. And I'm watching this and I'm going, Oh my God, this kid's talent level is at a whole different deal. Then we played Michigan state in the big 10 challenge at home. And I mean, we like they were, I mean, it was like a, it was a street ball game. I mean, it was, it was crazy. I, I'm convinced that that team, I don't in our in our league was a little down that year, if I recall right. I mean, I just remember I, who would have beaten us. I just didn't see it happening. And uh, so, to me, eleven is the one had things. You know, it was it was the one thing that could derail it. Derailed it. Right. I came. I came up. Had that, and we're not alone. I mean, there's been you know Kenyon Martin with Cincy. I mean, there's been other teams like, hey, they're going to win a national title if everything stays right, and somebody gets hurt and it changes things. Yeah, right? I remember coming up there. It might have been just an exhibition game or something, and y'all were playing. Uh, and it was that year. It, so it was you know Kyrie's freshman year. I remember that it was thirty to nothing before the other team scored their first one. Yeah. yeah. Um, because it, it and that and that was the perfect mix of really talented freshmen and seasoned vets that have been there, done that, that chose to come back, that were very, very great college basketball players. Big time. 
Uh, Kyle Singler and Nolan were, I mean, they were great players. Mm-hmm. We, and, and we've talked about this a little bit, and I think some of our frustrations watching the team this year was you got to have something at all at, at each level. You know, you got to be able to have a point guard that can score and facilitate. You need guys on the wing that can create and also score. And then you, you need somebody down in the post that can rebound, but also, you know, hold his own and scoring. And that team, like you said, that had that with the Plumleys, uh, with Kyrie. Kyle and Kyrie and Nolan. Um, yeah. You know, there, yeah, there was like defense, defense too. too. Yep. I mean, how many games did Patrick play there? Yeah. He, yeah. How many did he play? Like 11? Yeah, 11, 11 or 12. Yeah. He played, I want to say he played eight and then three in the tournament. Like he didn't play in the ACC tournament. We brought him back and slowly tried to reintroduce him during the NCAA tournament. And uh, we, we went out west and, and Arizona. Uh, we played them in Anaheim and, and they, they played lights out and we didn't. And, you know, and so it goes, but uh, I'd say that team to me had the, and again, it's a huge thing when the injury does happen, but, um, and, oh, by the way, we were pretty good without, without him. I think we lost four games the entire season. So, you know, it's not like that team couldn't right. absorb it. It just, it just was, I just felt like it had, they had 30 some games together. I just, I didn't see, I did not see that team. Right. Yeah. That's I'll kind of feed off that question too. And I wasn't going to bring it up, but somewhat of a Tar Heels fan myself. Oh. <laughs> so <laughs> I, we, we've probably been over. Yeah. We, we talked about it at the tech game, but what has been like, I know there's several and since you've been at Duke, but just kind of the craziest rivalry games. Austin Rivers hitting that shot. Yeah, that was a big I mean, one. That was a good one. I, yeah. I, I'll tell you what, the the game. Let's not the game over in Chapel Hill this year. It was. That was. One, just, uh, that was yeah. I mean, we were on the map. Yeah, it was good. <laughs> yeah. So much frustration. Yeah, it was a fun game. Fun game, game for everybody. <laughs> like, that is that is the epitome of never. You know, it's never. You never know. Over, you know. Watch yeah. to the last second. Yep. Look, the Carolina thing is special. There, you know, people – we do approach every game the same. Um, but there's there's a little more juice in people's step that week. I mean, I, it, it's it, – it's, both schools, I think, understand how lucky and fortunate they are to be part of something that big, uh, especially for our sport, which, you know, we're not – we don't have the same following that college football has. We don't have – you know, so, so uh, to kind of have that stage to ourselves – a right. couple times a year, maybe three, um, is pretty is pretty cool. Um, I like that tiebreaker game. That yeah, third game the, is big. Yeah, how, I mean, when I first got <laughs> here, basically that's what it was. It was just like split, and then whoever wins in the ACC tournament, you know, yep. that's the guy yeah. that. I think one of my favorite years, I think, it's a little underappreciated, was uh, 2014 uh, in Chapel Hill. Uh, because that that was the Brandon Ingram, yeah, uh, and I think it was they were down to like they, y'all literally had like six players because yeah. injuries and foul trouble, yes. and it was it was a very much like one on one game in the second just half. Whoever, yeah, whoever yeah, had the matchup, over. get them the ball, and everyone just move out of the way, and it somehow, was, yeah. some way, they yeah. end up pulling through. And I remember because it was I mean they were extremely overmatched. Like Carolina was very much the better team, which is what's so cool about it because even this year. I mean, it wasn't even close who was the better team. Right. But yet, Carolina shows up and is whack, you know, yeah, whacking them across yeah. the, the board until no, we they couldn't finish that, it. But that's the thing with that game is it doesn't that it does doesn't not. Matter. Like we knew, we knew the two Carolina games are going to be dog fight. Like you just, it doesn't matter. Like we knew, and yeah. um, and uh, you know, so. I, the Carolina thing is always special. I mean, there, there's been games. I mean, Duhon went end to end one year on a last minute one. Uh, I remember, uh, I remember in Cameron that you know we had to actually get a stop to win it. Like we had, we had just gone on. We had this comeback. We had just gone up, and uh, we had to get a stop. It was one of Reddick's years, and I can't remember the exact season, but yeah, I, I remember that. You remember? And they didn't even get a shot off. Mm-hmm. Like, they didn't even get a shot off yeah. the last thirty Not seconds. Even. And, you know, so that was a big time game, you know, 15, the comeback at our place, oh, yeah. to overtime, getting smoked and came back. Um, and by the way, they've had them too. So like, it's, uh, that's, what, oh, that's yeah. what I was saying. There's several to on no, both sides to choose from. Well, even, sure. even I remember Reddick's senior night uh, in Cameron 
uh, when – I mean, they were – Duke was obviously a superior team, and Carolina kind of waxed them around a little bit. Hans freshman year, he kind of, you know, took them to the woodshed a little bit. You know, it's just, it's just crazy how that, how that rivalry works out like that. Those guys – Awesome. No, they get out. And I'll, I'll say this, too. Um, there was a – and it wasn't a long stretch, but in the early 2000s, the Maryland series – Oof. was insane. Oof. Insane. Underrated. I, I mean, I can't – I mean, those games were insane for about a four- or five-year stretch. And, and, again, Maryland's was always really good. I'm not, like, saying that, you know, all the – they – but when they – I mean, when we played them, it was – it was going to be something memorable. Let's put it that way. Good or bad, it was going to be memorable. Was it – was it this year where they are you know, showing the stats and – UNC and Duke, like same record, same point difference, yeah. and everything. Like <laughs> that's that yeah, that's you can't just you, you can't, can't make, make that up. Yeah, yeah. You can't make no. that up. That's no. that blows my that's, mind. Uh, that's what I mean. And that thing is so it's it's such a cool it's you know again it's such a cool thing to be part of. And and again the the for the two teams. Again, we're we're both programs are so fortunate. We're in a lot of those games. You know, like we're in a lot of those big stages where it's like, oh man, this place is going bananas. Right. It's and, rare uh, that it's an unranked Duke versus an unranked Carolina. No, very rare. <laughs> very rare. It does not matter. I'm telling you, because oh yeah, they're, not they they're at the same barber shop. They they have. I mean, they That's know true, each yeah. other. And they're, I was gonna say they're and they've been they've been coming up together too. Half of them are close yeah. friends. Some of them have played on the same AAU, same AAU team. You know? yeah. Yeah. So it's it's we we recruit the same. You know, as a rule, we kind of recruit the same kids anyway Correct. so uh, it's 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 a pretty you know it your mind goes to a certain place for about two hours and then you know then you're grateful uh that you're part of it but like right. it, right. I, mean, I, <laughs> I do not i mean i, I am not uh i am not unhappy when i'm driving back from chapel hill and i see the sign welcome to durham let's just put let, let me just right leave right I'm not unhappy right what um who, what would you say is the, the best team that you've been a part of there? The, the, I mean, win a title or not. Like you said, the 11 yeah. team was the best one not to win. But Yeah. Uh -huh. I think for me, I don't – I don't. again, 20 years. So, I, I was not here for the Leitner, you know, the 91, 92. Right. Mm -hmm. I, you know, a lot of, pe a lot of uh, people at our place would, you know, would probably say 92 is probably the, you know, the best. I mean, but for me, it's pretty simple. It's 01. Mm -hmm. Um. I mean, we – that team I, – I actually think I, – I know they they get their credit, but I kind of feel like they don't. Right. <laughs> you know, they, like I feel like they're the team that's between the 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 10 and 15. You know, they're kind of in the tw in between there. But that team, if you think about it, I mean, Duhon, Boozer, Dunleavy, Williams, Battier – I mean, it was crazy. Yeah. Wasn't Nate James was there then too? What's that? Nate James, he was there Nate too. James. Yeah, I mean, it. You know, I mean, it. It was, and they were on a mission, and it was that was one of those years. It was like when they, you know, when Shane was a senior. I mean, they were on it. That team was on a freaking mission <laughs> from day one. And I feel like they were almost ahead of their time a little bit too. Just the style of play. Uh, they took a thousand. Yeah. They took a thousand threes. Like people don't. Yeah. Like our power forward was jacking up threes left and right in that. Oh team. yeah, they they shoot threes, run the court, yeah. um, and that was still in the days too. They do that, but but very very. Uh, yeah, right. It's also they uh, played in the league. Dedicated. For, oh yeah. Yeah. All I mean, very every dedicated. Player was very prosperous in the league. Very you know, dedicated to uh, to playing defense too. Like that was like the man to man Duke team, you know and. and uh, like I said, they could, they would have been able to compete with anybody yeah. in, in today's game because they play they could they could play any style that you wanted, which is why I would probably say the O one team too because you could get points from anywhere. You know, like the that was the issue I'd say with like Reddick's years because if JJ wasn't shooting it, yeah, y'all weren't winning. You stuff. know, like it, it, but they could score from the point. So the between Dunleavy Levy and Duhon, mm -hmm. Boozer could contribute. Uh, Battier would contribute, and then you get guys off the bench so whatever contribute. I mean, it was it was deep um, defensively. Yeah, I mean, it was even just mismatches. The the final four game Maryland when they're getting beat by 
what, 22 and end up winning by 20 or something? I mean, yeah, that, it was a 33-point swing. That yeah. was on uh, – that was on during this uh, during our time this time too. I watched. I did, I got to check that one out too. That, that's that's what I do in my spare time at spring training is I pull up just random Duke games. Duke games. Any any great game, right. I'm watching it because nothing else. Nothing else on. Might as right. well dive into a little bit of history. <laughs> it's amazing. It's really though is amazing how the game has changed, and mm-hmm. when you watch it and you just see the again I the the 2010 team. I I can say this. So when I was in that arena that night, and it was wild because it's in Indy with Butler, it was crazy, man. It was like, oh, this feels weird in here, man. Like, it, it just had that whole Hoosiers feel to it. You know, you're like, oh, this is yeah. – And yeah. so um, – but, man, you know, and in the game, it was like – I just remember after the game talking about how every dribble was contested, and it seemed like every shot. And it was just – it was kind of hard to watch in person. But, man, I watched it, and I'm like, there was movement like it it was so much better seeing the tv angle because you could see the whole court better mm-hmm. and there's so much cutting and and the help side defense both teams it was crazy guy would get like that's why it was so hard is like there's there were two dudes on every ball handle. you know all of a sudden right. it was like upside and brad stevens yeah it was i, I was uh you know I don't, again that's another one i don't know that they quite got their like that team was a hell of a lot better than probably in the in the overall all the duke teams you know that people talk mm-hmm. about they probably don't quite get their due either you know mm-hmm. Dude, the, the final shot go off the glass off the front rim for both yeah, yeah. From gordon the hayward gordon, gordon hayward. hayward that of was course. his coming out party of course yeah. illegal screen on single oh, I, I remember that <laughs> i remember <laughs> that anyway. um what about the 19 team i know they didn't win yeah and i know that i know that myself it was that was that's a one-on-one Duke team. I don't think – or in college basketball in general, I don't know if that will ever be recreated. Um, you can yeah. maybe argue like Anthony Davis's year at Kentucky. But yeah. other than that, I mean, they that team too, I mean, with Anthony Davis, I mean, you remember Anthony Davis. Like that was – I mean, they were, what, 34-2 and two or whatever. But the the Duke team, especially in the ACC and the whole, that whole, you know, um, schedule. But, yeah. I mean, those, you're going to have three guys that are going to be very successful in the league because – Zion was pretty seamless, let's be honest, once he got, you know, to the league. And RJ had a little bit of his ups and downs. But at the same time, he's very skilled and talented. He's oh. just getting started. And he's in New York, which is a little different. And then and the Cam, uh, Cam, Cam being here, I mean, he, for us. Oh, I mean, once he found From his start. rhythm and, and his game, you could really start to see him take off as far yeah. as, like, this is kind of what, you know, Duke thought that they were getting. And, and, and it was just a little bit different for him, I feel like, you know, going from – the first option to the third and trying to feel how his game would fit with the other two because they work so well together and Smooth. it took him a while to, you know, find that. Find but once, that he, once he did in Atlanta, he was killing folks. Yeah. No, he's talented. I mean, he's, he's talented. Mm-hmm. And, and, uh, and again, you had kind of those alpha personalities, you know, as players, um, you know, uh, I think, I think, they all run their own race. You know, we talk about they're all running their own race. And sometimes it takes a kid 15 college games. Sometimes it takes them one. Sometimes it takes them into their pro career before they really, they really find their, who they're going to be. And I think, um, I think, you know, a little bit for all those guys, uh, you know, I think they're, they're doing that now as pros. Um, but yeah, look, super, that's the team that will, it, they'll be remembered. You know, I, I remember how upset all of us were after we lost to Michigan state. And, um, and, you know, in, in my mind, I know where I went was, you know, look, someone else is going to win the national championship this year, other than us. And that, that stinks. Right. The 30 for 30 made about the 2019 college basketball season is going to be, do you remember the year Duke had Zion, RJ and Cam and like, and how everyone, like it was the one year I'd say 15 and 19 are the two years that I've been here where people, I didn't feel like we had the amount of uh, venom thrown our way. That mm-hmm. I was going to say that too. To watch, you know? Yeah. Duke became yeah. lovable. They made, they made Duke like lovable because everyone yeah. wants to hate him. Not like Zion. Like, how do you not like them? Right. Yeah. And I think, like, the season was so much different because of all the social media stuff these days. 
and yeah. how we're early Zion there. came onto the scene. I mean, yeah. he's been well, – people was, knew him in eighth grade. Yeah. And been it started him, and then, Canada, you know. It started yeah. up in Canada with all the stuff they That's did. A, yeah. So, so that the hype, the immediately hype starting, man. separates it from you know an O one team or an O five team, well, it, and it didn't it didn't help their case when they open up against Kentucky, and it was just. An, I remember you remember we were sitting there watching the house, and I go, man, I just hope this is a blowout tonight, but I know it's not going to be. Right. We, Ten minutes in, and they go, "Well, you got your blowout," because it was an absolute rabbit game. Like it, it was an, it was an, it was an annihilation yes. on every. I mean, there was a hundred points scored with like ten minutes left in the game. Yeah, we played lights out that night. I mean, it's like they got shot out of a cannon. And um, and again, the, you know, you talk about derailing. You know, think about it. A blown out shoe is arguably the reason we never quite got back to the level we were playing at before it happened. Mm -hmm. I think the night that that happened, I think we were ready to make a statement that night. Yeah. And, and it it just kind of everything deflated. Never had a chance. Never had a chance after that. So early. Uh, Even, even with that Zion at Duke, I mean, he just consistently with the amount of like hype that was when because the first like you said the the, the video that comes in my mind is him windmilling on that poor little white kid <laughs> i mean which one in high school which high school? School? Yeah. and everyone's like oh well, this is in high school like wait till he gets to do he gets to do balls like and then people every said, get that and that video's in my mind and his block shot verse i think virginia tech where he threw it about 15 rows in the stands <laughs> mm-hmm. coming from the low block Mm-hmm. But he just consistently performed, and then everyone's like, "Oh, well, wait till he gets to pros." G League really, or the, the, the summer league yeah. kills, yeah. and they're like, "Oh, well, you know." I remember people debating, "Look at where he's getting his shots. He can't do that in the, you know, he's not in the real NBA. Enough, yeah. He can't do that in the real NBA." But there's more space. There's, there's like more the, space in the NBA. Well, and, and my thing was, he's getting right. There. Like you can't t- you yeah. can't get mad at him for taking the shots at the, at that the he's getting that he's getting because he's getting yeah, those man. shots. Like he's right. clearly. He doesn't just magically appear there with the ball. Like, he gets there somehow, some way. They're like, oh, he's not going to be physical enough for the NBA. Like, yeah. his first he game, he strips yeah. the ball from somebody. Oh, yeah. And yeah. Stuff <laughs> right back and it's like, yeah, he's not So, I guess enough. feeding off of that, is Zion, like, the most freakish player you've ever seen, like, in person? Because I know, like, you have – you've seen so many great players in their – yeah, so good I, at what they do. Yes. But Zion is just – Yeah, his – from a just, from a physical standpoint, right. he's – because of his size and strength mm-hmm. and speed, I think yeah he's he's at a different um, you know again I he didn't play many games for us but man I'm telling Kyrie was a he was a different you know he was you know he's he was Under, just such a different player than Zion too underappreciated I'd say too would be Bagley I remember watching him in person yeah. I'm like yeah whoa like yeah. this guy just the the ability to jump land and jump again was yeah he remarkable. had that second zion had remarkable. that those two yeah, guys exactly. both, and they both had that just had the more physicality aspect so yes. i remember just seeing him in person when they yep. were playing just, indiana you remember me and Malcolm up there yeah and it was like there was something that he did in that game that people remember like you know his steal and he'll go to a windmill there was one he like cut through the paint on a fast break around a guy hopped off the wrong foot and still crammed it yeah, on somebody it's like no, one what thing I was going to say that, like, most impressed me is, like, his dribbling abilities. Oh, yeah. yeah. like Because he grew up as a guard, yeah. Yeah. He's, he's, he's uh, nuts. That's how they got him to come there. Because he was, uh, He's one of the guys that um, you grab the person next to you when, when he's, like, in the open court. Like, you know what oh. I mean? There's, like, there's not many players that you just, you just don't know what you're going to see. And he, right. you know – Definitely one of those. Hell, you're guys. grabbing the person next to you when you're in half court because <laughs> yeah, he's just <laughs> weaving through people. And to be, yeah. you know, 280 pounds weaving through, it's crazy. It looks like me playing on a nine foot goal at some kids camp. <laughs> Eight foot goal. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. Well, and that's and that's what um, I remember you said that kind of how you got him to go there because Coach K said, "Listen, a we have the biggest brand in college basketball, and you have the biggest personal brand. Imagine what this place will do for that in itself." Mm-hmm. But you're more than a dunker. Like we see you as a facilitator. We see you as somebody that can alter the game on the defensive end. Um, we get we we see you as somebody that has a lot better 
ability to dribble and pass, you know, like we were just talking about. I mean, he does so many more things than just, just dunk. dunk. And honestly, his jump shot may look a little odd, but if it you leave him open, it goes in. Yeah. You know yeah. what I'm saying? And people are like, oh, he's going to have to develop that game. I said, it's, it's going in. pretty good. Yeah. yeah. If his he has the space. His, his defense is really Rebounding. I mean, yeah. You know, um, and again, he's got to figure out the pro, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a more open game. It's a, the floor is open. Um, you know, so he can do plenty of damage because mm -hmm. of the type of player he is, but, mm -hmm. um, you know, and, 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 uh, no, he, obviously he would the special and, and not to, to be repetitive, but he's, he's a, like Zion is really one of the guys you want to be around and you want to have in your locker room. Cause he's a, he's, he's happy. You know, he's right. he's low maintenance. He loves what he does. How much attention. Like, that was the cool thing with that team. It was a lot of work because of the attention. But those guys never created the work. The only thing they did was made people want to talk to them. And mm -hmm. great. that means you're doing great things, you know. So, we had a, we had a blast. I mean, it was literally, though, it was, it was kind of, uh, we, you know, we talked about the, um, you know, kind of like a, a traveling rock band, you know, on tour yeah. is kind of what it felt like as you went to different arenas and, and the ticket requests and the amount of, just kind of the amount of attention, you know, and obviously right. the ratings were what they were that year for, for us. And um, it was, it was a, it was a different year, even for us, you know, it was a, it yeah. was a little bit of a, of an extreme. Speaking of different years, how has obviously COVID has impacted all sports, but what has it done? Not only for obviously the events that happened this season for you all, but the future. We talked a little bit about um, you know spring athletes getting that chance to come back and this sort of stuff. But then we talked about the issue of you know financials and are they going to come back? What are they going to do? What um what kind of madness has it been this year for you all? And you know what is kind of that next step that you are looking at? Well, I, I think the, the hardest, the hardest part of this is, um, the, the, there's no firm date, right? No, there's no end game here. Like, it, what if, or unknown. You start, yeah, you start feeling like you got some momentum and you're, you're honing in on a, on a plan, some new data comes out yeah. and you feel like, well, that just got sidetracked or it's, you know, the unknown has been the, has been the, the biggest challenge. Um, obviously not being together is, makes it harder. Um, and you know, it, it's just, it's, it's very difficult to plan in a, in a sport and, and all of the sports are like this where it's not unique to basketball. It's very difficult to plan. And how do you, how do you kind of prep for a season when you don't know what the season it's going to look like how do you how do you talk about game day atmosphere when you don't know if there's going to be fans how do you plan yeah. for travel when right now like in our at our school we're not allowed to travel yeah. like yeah are we going to go to chicago in november are we going to, you, you don't you know you don't know those things because there's there's bigger issues at play that are probably going to determine that so it's there there's all kinds of things, scheduling, you know, uh, the, if the academic calendar moves, what happens to games that may have been scheduled in a finals week or that were not scheduled in finals week now that no. later finals week. So there's 300 and some schools dealing with it. Like right. and so do that math, think about the amount of movement and things. And we're all trying to plan and half the schools might know what their academic calendar is and half the schools won't. It's, yeah. it's, I mean, it is Don. I mean, there, there's, look, we're really lucky. We work at Duke. We're really lucky. We're a power five school. We, we have this, you know, this great brand. All schools are dealing with these issues mm -hmm. on some level. And um, so, so I, you know, this is about how do you kind of maintain that level of, uh, you know, gratefulness you've got to, when you've got all these challenges to try to work through that basically every time you open a door, something else opens There's or another door right there, but, or it, it's, it's the unknown and the unpredictability of this has been, it's been really difficult 
to manage. And, and again, I know that's not unique to Duke or our program. Every program in the country would tell you the exact same thing. And I would imagine your social media work is going to be probably almost that much more because imagine if you don't have fans in there, you know, fans still want that connection to the players and to the program. So your social media aspect is probably going to be, I would say more than it has ever been because yeah, it'll get doubled. Yeah. It'll get doubled. And I think that's the interesting part of it is, and now, you you know, talking about the importance of the media, people are going to really, really harp on the, the content you produce because that is what's giving them that, Yep. I guess, uh, link to Duke basketball. Well, and, and traditional media. Correct. How safe is it going to be to have them in the building? That's absolutely right. So, and again, I'm not like ESPN, you know, like I, you, we've got to work through all these things. You know, I, you know, we, we have, we're, we're one of the few um, kind of high level schools that still do the open locker room after games. Um, is that going to be safe? in the current environment, you know, are we going to, you know, like these are, there are so many many hoops to jump through down a hallway. There's a rabbit hole and it's like, (laughs) okay, at what point when you run into seven rabbit holes, is this still a good idea? It's not fun anymore. The hard part of piecing this thing together. Yeah. Yeah. But we're not alone. Like it's again, we're, we're trying to figure it out like everyone else and, and, uh, and everyone we will get there, you know, but, just living it the last 10 to 12 weeks, it's um, been really challenging. Keep your people on the same page. Try to make sure we're all communicating what needs to com- be communicated to whom and when. Um, it's just hard when you're not together. Right. It's like a big game of telephone. It is. Like relaying something to somebody who relays it, who relays it. Mm-hmm. And there's no malice because we're all Zoomed out. We're all, right? We, we're all in meetings. We're all doing these things. And it's, it, sometimes you simply just forget yeah. <laughs> because you, your mind only has so much space, you know? So and your whole routine of what you're used to or accustomed to is just thrown out the window. It's gone. Yes. And yeah, as soon it, as you find another one, it changes again. Yeah. You have to find a different one. It, it, I mean, it's happened to me today, probably three times already. Yeah. And, and that's just today. And so, and so it's this constant game of, you know, let's make the best decisions we can. And oh, by the way, can we make decisions right now? Because we're still waiting on other things, you know, institutionally, you know, Duke's got to decide where it is on some of these issues, not Duke basketball, but Duke. And, and we're going to have to follow the lead of what, you know, what our institution wants for, for their students and and workers. So yeah, it's, it's been a, it's, it's a, this is going to be one we talk about for a while. You know, once we're on the other side of it, this will be one we'll, you know, hey, do you remember when type conversations? You know, and Dansby and I have talked about just trying to emotionally and, and, and uh, mentally staying right. engaged and staying Soon. attitude and, and trying to feel when it's really hard to feel someone when you can't. Right. Mm-hmm. Especially you know, when you're used to being connected like that. Say, you know, especially especially that's why it's good to see you now and, you know, yeah. just FaceTime in a couple of times and just yep. be able to talk because it makes it a little bit more normal and you can see and try and connect. But there's a world outside of my office walls that that's been the thing for me is like, you're just, it's the same. <laughs> it's especially like, for y'all to y'all two that are constantly traveling and constantly talking to people and being around people like more so than I'd say the average person. So yeah. for y'all to be, closed off i'm sure it's just killing you yeah even yeah, me and i'm it's yeah. it's different and again you look at what's going on out there in 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 the world and and you know i think i think everyone should be grateful for what they do have and it's but you got to remind yourself you know you got to remind yourself that okay it's not we, we're gonna get there we're gonna right. get there but they're just the the constant changing of uh it's almost like the goalpost moves every every day, and you're like, I just want to kick a 48 yard field goal, and one day it's 30, and one day it's yeah. 60, and just tell me I need to kick a 48 yarder, you know? Yeah. You kick a 48 yard, and the wind starts howling, and, and, yeah. and you yeah. miss it. Right. Like, uh, the flick game, you know that flick yeah. game with the six wind coming, you know? Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, good old paper toss. Yeah. Yeah. Well, John. 
appreciate you coming on. Yeah, this, is, this is a blast. I, um, I know you. I know you loved it though. I, I knew secretly. that you you would love being able to do something a little bit new and fresh. No, it's good. I've had I've had. Uh, I'll tell you the most fun I've had through some of this is um, doing classes. You know, I've done some for Penn State. I've done some for some of the local schools, and it's mm-hmm. so cool to like just get out of the kind of the grind. Right. Yeah. And hopefully you're about, I'm hoping, knock on wood, yeah. you're about to get into your grind. I'm waiting. Mm-hmm. Like I'm we're, waiting. All, we're all hoping. So <laughs> It will be a good thing for all of us. Um, but, uh, no, it's been – I appreciate it and hope I didn't embarrass my family or my program. <laughs> <laughs> I think you did just yeah, fine. Yeah, great, buddy. I don't know, some other, some other years at Duke might be pissed that you didn't mention their team, but – yeah, that's okay. That's okay. That's, <laughs> they know they know we we got their backs. They're right. every one of them. I, I will say this: out of the twenty years I've been there, we haven't had a bad one. No, no so that's, that's true. That no. is, I can. You're, great, you're a great. You're a great coach. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna say. So, all right, guys, I appreciate. Well, we appreciate it. it. Yeah, yeah, man. Thank you, Sean. All right. Bye.